Hello geometry students, in this video we are going to prove the triangle inequality theorem which says that in any triangle the sum of the lengths of two sides, of any two sides, is greater than the length of the third side. So that means in this triangle we can say um, two different, three different statements. If you take any two sides, like BC plus AC, that's going to be bigger than the other side. So we can say that BC plus AC is greater than AB. Okay. We can say that BC plus AB that's going to be greater than AC. I'll name these statements here. And then finally we can say that uh, actually, I'm going to name this with Roman numerals just so we don't confuse it with the steps of the proofs later on. So we'll call this statement number one. We can call this statement number two. And we can call this statement number three. Okay, And then we can say that finally AB plus AC is greater than BC. Okay, So any two sides, if you add them up, is going to be longer than the third side. Now, let's consider something here. Let's, let's make one of these sides the longest side because, I mean, in, in a triangle, they're either, they're either equilateral or they're going to be, or something is going to be the longest side. So if we say, uh, if BC is the longest side, then we can say that statement 1 and 2 are obviously true or trivially true because if you have the longest side and you add something else to it, uh, it's still going to be, the sum here is still going to be true. Okay, so if BC is already greater than AB, if you add something else to it, it's still going to be greater than that. So we can say that 1 and 2 um, are trivial. We true. Okay. We can spend some time proving them, but it's probably not worth it at this time. Let's focus on this third statement here. Let's focus on this one, okay? because that's the more important one. This is saying that the two smaller sides, AB and AC, if you add up the two smaller sides, they are going to be greater than the greatest side. Okay. And so this is the, the really the heart of the proof right here. And so uh, let's get to work on this proof. Now, in this first step, what I'm going to do is employ kind of a uh, very rudimentary postulate, and that's called the ruler postulate. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the length uh, of AC. So I'm going to place my ruler here along AC and then duplicate this length. Okay? And this is a really, this, is, this postulate seems really silly and, and unnecessary at first, but the longer that we work with this in geometry, the more useful it becomes. So, and I'm like going to extend BA, and I'll write this down in just a minute. Okay? So in my first step, I am going to extend BA, so BA to D, okay, so I'm calling this new point here D, so that AD equals AC. Okay. So again, I use this ruler here to mark the length of AC, and then I've turned it this way, and I've extended the, uh, the length. Okay. So I'll extend it. I think my drawing was a little bit off there, but there it is. Okay. And the reason for this is the ruler postulate, which says that you can duplicate the length of, of any existing segment. And my second step, we are going to connect uh, D and C. So connect D and C. Okay. And since we created AD to be congruent to AC, we can make those congruent marks in there, which allows us to say that triangle ADC is isosceles. In other words, it's got two congruent sides. Okay, and that's going to be very big to us. Okay, 
So now my general strategy or the general direction of my proof is that I'm going to try and show I'm going to try and show that DB is greater than BC. Okay? And you'll see soon enough in the proof why that's significant, but just a big picture here. If I can show that DB is greater than BC, I can eventually split up DB into this statement right here. Okay? So I'm going to name just a couple of angles. I'm going to name this angle one, and I'm going to name this angle two. Okay. So the first thing that I can say is that angle D right here and angle one are congruent. So fourth statement here, the measure of angle D is equal to the measure of angle one. And this is base angles. So you can look back a little bit in some of the other videos to see the proof of the base angles theorem. But it basically says that if these two sides are congruent, then the two base angles down here must also be congruent as well. So I'm going to write that statement up there. Then next thing I'm going to show is that 1 plus 2 is, is equal to the measure of angle BCD. Okay. So the measure of angle BCD, in other words, this big angle right here, is equal to the measure of angle 1, this little one right here, plus the measure of angle 2. And this is angle addition. So from this statement here, because BCD contains 1 in it, BCD has to be bigger than 1. This is a proof about inequalities, so I want to show this inequality and get this in here. So I can say that the measure of angle BCD has to be greater than the measure of angle 1. Since BCD contains 1 as part of its angle measure. Okay. Let me continue these steps, the next steps over here, so I'm running out of room here. So what I'm going to do next is take measure of angle D and substitute it in here. So I can say that step seven, measure of BCD is greater than the measure of angle D. Okay, so take D, since D is equal to one, I can take D and substitute it in here. So it's greater than the measure of angle D. And my reasoning here is substitution. Substitution, okay. And so this helps me uh, quite a bit right here. So if I just look back at this triangle, BCD, that's this angle right here, is bigger than angle D, that's this, that's this smaller angle right here. Okay, so BCD is greater than angle D, what that means is that the side opposite that has to also have the same relationship or inequality. So the side opposite BCD, in other words, DB, so in other words, from the statement up here, uh, DB, the side opposite BCD, has to be greater than the side that's opposite angle D. The side that's opposite angle D is BC. Okay, and I'm looking at the bigger triangle here, D, B, C. Okay. So I've shown what I wanted to show here. And now um, I'm almost done. I just have to do a little bit of substitution. So if you notice that D, B is a combination of two smaller segments. So I can say that um, in my ninth step that D, B equals... DA plus AB. Okay, and this is angle addition again. I'm not going to write it here because I'm running out of space, but it is angle addition. Okay. Then I can take DA, this statement right here, and substitute it in here for DB. So DA plus AB is greater than BC. Okay. And just to pause for a moment here and look at where we've come. We've been trying to show this statement, 
and we're getting pretty darn close. I got AB in there, I got BC in there, and the one last thing I need to do is somehow get AC in here. But from the ruler postulate, we know that AD is really equal to AC. So I can take this and substitute it in here. So in my 11th step, I can say that um, AC plus, and let me use a different color here, because I really want to emphasize this, this last point right here. Okay, so we'll use, uh, use blue here. So that AC plus AB is greater than BC. And just for posterity, making this look a little bit better, let's just swap these two so we can say AB plus AC is greater than BC. Okay. And my last reasoning here is substitution. So this up here was angle addition, substitution, substitution, and reordering this, or the associative property. And so now I've done it. Um, this is the end of our proof. We can show that we have shown that AB plus AC has to be greater than BC, which in the bigger scheme of things shows that if you have um, a triangle, the two smaller sides always, always, without exception, have to add up to a length that's greater than the longest side. So two smaller sides, add them up, greater than the longest side. And this right here is the proof of it, the triangle inequality theorem.